Creative Mind, Exploring the Art of Thinking, by Forrest Kinney. Balancing, Part 1. We know that staying healthy involves finding a balance between being active and getting enough rest. Also, a balance between eating and not eating. Likewise, we know that staying happy involves striking a balance between having enough time alone and enough time with others. It's about being strong and directed, yet being flexible and free. One of these without the other inevitably causes problems. So living is all about balancing opposing forces. If hot is not balanced by cold, we can't live. And if cold is not balanced by warmth, we will also struggle to survive. We can only live because there is an alternating, a balancing between hot and cold temperatures. Now, balance is often portrayed as a scale or balance beam, suggesting we need to give each side equal weight. But this is a static picture, so unlike life, which is constantly in flux. Or balance is conveyed like this. Once again, it's a static picture so unlike the river of life. We need a much more accurate image of balance to guide our thinking. Tightrope walking is a dynamic process. It's not about finding balance once and for all. It's about balancing continuously. As the tightrope walker moves forward, he or she steps to the left, then to the right, but never too far to one side. Too far to the left or to the right and it's all over. The tightrope walker loses balance and plunges toward the earth. It's like the very basis of our life. We breathe in, pause, breathe out, pause, in, out. This sort of breathing keeps us alive, so we could say that breathing in is good when it moves together with breathing out, and likewise, breathing out is good when it moves together with breathing in. Here, two opposite forces are moving and working together to create a positive result. So we could say that breathing out is bad when it stops there and doesn't move toward breathing in again. If we do this, we're dead in a few minutes. Likewise, breathing in is bad when it doesn't move toward breathing out. So in is bad and out is bad when these opposite forces do not work together when they exclude each other. Then they become an intolerable extreme. So now we have two good states and two bad states. When these are all put together, they make what I call a completed balancing structure, a way to think about polar opposites with four terms rather than the usual two. Now in can have both a positive and negative value, and so can out. The problem with normal, everyday binary thinking is that it doesn't take into account these four possible states. It thinks with only two of these terms. It would be like saying, in is good, and therefore out is bad. Or, out is good, and therefore in is bad. Though we wouldn't do this with breathing, we do it all the time with other things, as we shall see. And this causes problems. Healthy thinking isn't like this. It doesn't get stuck in binary conclusions. It's like walking. We step forward with our right foot, then the left, then the right, then the left. Left is good and right is good when they move together, when they are aware that they need each other. Left is bad when it excludes right. Without a right foot, we would have to hop forward on one foot. And likewise, right is bad when it excludes left. In our thinking about many things, we need both left and right sides because life is a meandering river, moving left, then right, then left again. If we were to drive down this hill without any turns, we'd get going so fast that we'd crash and burn. So let's apply this practice of balancing to common issues in our lives. We know that being part of a community is good. Without friends and family and collaborators, what would life be? 
and we know that being alone and isolated is bad. So we have community is good and isolation is bad. This kind of crude binary thinking is so common that we hardly realize it's imbalanced. So we need to do some balancing to help us live creative, fulfilling lives. So the first step is to place these two terms in the balancing structure and ask, what are the two missing terms? Well, what's the positive side of being alone? If we're constantly around others, it can be difficult to discover our own particular way of being and to have original thoughts. As someone once said, solitude is the school of genius. So having solitude is good. So now we see that it's all about finding a balance between the two positive forces of solitude and community. So let's look at the other side. What happens when we have community without any solitude? Well, constantly being in a crowd encourages what is called groupthink, a herd mentality. As Benjamin Franklin once wrote, if everyone is thinking alike, then no one is thinking. So if we don't have any time alone, we can easily become like one more sheep in a herd and lose our individuality and end up with uniformity. So now we could say that solitude is good and being in a herd is bad. But this is binary thinking again until we put all these four viewpoints together. Here we have a completed balancing structure. Thinking in this way will help promote balancing between the positive forces of solitude and community. Let's turn to another common issue, finding a balance between having too few possessions and having too many to feel free and unencumbered. Most of us want a home in which we can surround ourselves with things that matter to us and make us feel alive. We want to feel the abundance of life. So this ancient dwelling is probably too basic, it's too rustic, with not enough room for what we need. So this suggests scarcity rather than abundance. We now have a classic example of binary thinking. Abundance is good and scarcity is bad. Since this kind of crude thinking can cause problems, let's go to work. What would be a positive force that balances out abundance? Well, it's hard to think of one. So instead, let's ask, what would be the problem with having too many possessions? Yes, clutter. Too much stuff. All these unnecessary things make it hard to see what is really necessary to be happy. So now it's clear what will balance out abundance. It's simplicity or clarity about what we really need. Because we can see that abundance without simplicity leads to clutter. Just as simplicity without abundance can lead to scarcity. So let's put this all together and now we have a completed balancing structure. This will help us remember that there are times to acquire things and times to give them away. There's a season to bring things into our lives and another to throw them out. Let's turn to the world of politics because it could definitely be helped by the balancing practice. Politicians frequently talk about the importance of freedom, of liberty. So liberty is good. After all, if we're limited in everything we do by rules and restrictions, then that could be described as tyranny in some form. So here we have a clear choice. Liberty is obviously good, while tyranny is obviously bad. But once again, the binary structure suggests that this obvious and common way of thinking probably needs balancing. So liberty is good, but what if we could do anything without any restraint? This unchecked pursuit of one's self-interest at the expense of other people's well-being is something we could call anarchy or unchecked greed. So liberty needs to be kept in check, balanced by some social agreements. Traffic laws and other agreements are necessary for us to be able to coexist peacefully. So we could say that law is good. Otherwise, liberty becomes the right to do whatever one wants without any regard to other people's health or happiness. So now we have a complete balancing. Typical binary thinking doesn't think of all four terms. It's like making choices with a bar between our hands. 
we only have the possibility of thinking that liberty is good and tyranny is bad, or law is good and anarchy is bad. And then you have unending conflicts between various groups, something we can see at every election. Healthy thinking is not locked into false polarities such as freedom versus tyranny. The real polarity in the cases we've explored so far is between the two positive forces, in this case liberty and law, and the two negative ones, in this case anarchy and tyranny. The balancing structure helps us to recognize that the real polarity is between the positive forces and the negative. Here's a way to explain the balancing practice to others by using your hand as an illustration rather than the two interlocking spirals. Suppose someone you really care about starts thinking that exercise is the key to happiness and the way to not stagnate, but they really start overdoing it. Here's how to explain balancing using your hand. This represents basic binary thinking. Exercise is good, while stagnation is bad. Since we only have two terms here, one good and one bad, it's now obvious we're stuck in a binary thinking pattern until we find four terms. This hand position represents that we are now looking for those four terms. So what is the balancing force for exercise? What keeps it in check? Well, it's rest. So now we have exercise and rest as the positive terms, and we have stagnation if we have rest without enough exercise. So, on the other side, what about when we have exercise without any rest? Well, that's when we have exhaustion. So now we have the completed balancing structure. If you can, move your middle fingers together to separate the two positive forces that work together from the two negative forces on the sides that exclude each other. As you move through life, I hope you find the balancing practice to be as useful as I have found it to be. In part two, I'm going to explore how this way of thinking can help dissolve many arguments and conflicts or prevent them from happening at all.